This is the hidden world of Steve Jones, one of Britain's best known scientists and the courageous individual who is about to take the teaching challenge. He researches and lectures across the globe and has written best-selling books on evolution, biology and genetics. Most of his life has been a quest to discover how life works. But he's never had to explain it to a class of 10 and 11 year olds before. Tomorrow, it won't be me teaching a science lesson. It's going to be Professor Steve Jones. Professor Steve Jones is a very famous and important British scientist. So you're going to have a real scientist in here tomorrow, which is very exciting. He's going to be teaching you about genetic diversity, which is the differences and similarities between humans. So possibly before tomorrow, as a special homework assignment, see what you can find out about Professor Steve Jones and what is genetic diversity. Find out what you can. It's not a subject we've looked at before. Right, children, please put your books into a pile and prepare for your maths lesson. Meanwhile, on the Marlborough Downs, Steve searches for his weapons of choice for the lesson on genetic diversity. If you look at snails, they're very distinct in appearance from one to the other within this location here. You can pick up 30 or 40 different kinds. And from place to place, they look very different. And of course, so do we. People look very different, and as we'll see with the class, um, if you look a bit harder, there's all kinds of hidden differences among, uh, among people you may not be aware of. Well, I hope that the year six class will get out of my lesson the idea, I think overwhelmingly, is that science is fun. That's what I hope to be able to do. He may well want the session to be fun, but will Steve measure up to the expectations of Mrs Green's science class? In cartoons, scientists are made out to be really bad, but in real life they're good because they're trying to cure asthma when people are suffering, especially in the hay fever season. A good scientist will try and find a cure for a disease by thinking out their ideas, writing it down and then most importantly testing out their ideas. If their idea works, they've found the cure for the disease. If their idea doesn't work, then they have to go back and think up a new idea and test it out and test it out until they find it. A bad scientist would try to take over the world and destroy land and they would have an evil laugh. <laughs> Anxious not to disappoint, Professor Jones talks through his lesson plan with Fiona Green. Your children will be interested. My concern is whether my <laughs> technique of teaching, which in common with many other professors, is to stand in front of a large class and pretend, pretend to be mad, um, whether that's going to work in this context. Well, I think that'll be very interesting to see what the children's <laughs> reaction will be. And they're very, very excited about the prospect of meeting a real scientist. So how much do they know about biology in general? I haven't talked to them very much about... We've talked a little bit about genetic diversity. They didn't really have a clue, because obviously it's not an area that we no. would particularly cover. But they are very interested in snails and creatures, so I think that they will they will be quite excited about anything like that. What I find fascinating is I can talk about um, uh, sex in quite a graphic way to sixth formers. Um, I mean, it's scientific, but it's reasonably graphic. The shyest and perhaps the most religious of all kids will just sit there and listen with interest, OK? But if I mention race, uh -huh. then they all go, oh, we shouldn't talk about that. You and might find it actually the opposite with these yeah. children. They'll be very happy to talk about race. Uh -huh. OK, so what I'm going to hope to do, and it'll probably be chaos, um, I've got some rather simple genetic tests, not really genetic tests, they're just looking at you at themselves. Um, and I'm going to ask them to divide themselves up in different ways. Uh, and look at the snails first, so they'll see what differences are. Yes. And I'll say, well, if you look at the class, and I mean, I, I, I need your advice in this, because okay. I'm not used to doing this stuff. I'll say, OK, let's see if we can divide ourselves up in different ways. What can you think of? And the first way that's obvious to me, and it's so obvious, perhaps they won't think of it, is boys and girls. Yes, I think okay. they, would, uh, would, I, I think they so, would go with that, so yes. Am I allowed to say dark skin and light skin? Um, should I want to, what would be the appropriate language for that? I mean, skin colour. Okay. If you're talking about eye colour... OK, OK. So eye colour, then skin, skin colour. Skin colour, hair colour. OK. Then, then we get into things they won't have thought about. Stick your tongue out at me. Can you roll that into a tube? 
Into a tube? Yeah, you no. can. Yes, you I can did. do it. You just did. Mm. You did that. I can't do that. Yeah. No. I simply can't do that. And that actually does run in families, and it's yes. genetic. Yeah. And kids are always amazed by this. Um, and it's guaranteed to cause chaos when they compare each other. Okay, so we can divide them that way. They're going to enjoy this lesson. And he'll, that's the plan, is to try and divide them up and divide them up and divide them up. And with a bit of luck, everybody will find that they're different from everybody else. Okay. Yes. Then I'll ask them why that might be important and what that tells them about themselves. Well, I think it's always good to challenge yeah. the children. And I think, Steve, you need to rem remember that this is a mixed ability yeah, group. I don't think there's any problem with a mixed ability group. It's no, to not me, for actually, science. In science. That's interesting you say not in science. Because science, to me, is the one thing that should work with a mixability group. Exactly. Because in science, you can always go as far as you can go and learn something. Science is made for mixed abilities. Absolutely. Yeah. So this will be the perfect class for you. Well, I hope in an hour or and so yours. I don't rush out of the room in tears. You won't. Right. With the expectant pupils in a nearby classroom, Steve prepares his apparatus while Fiona gets ready to monitor his lesson on a screen next door. Well, coming in here is a room obviously exactly like the one I went to school in, in Liverpool. And the class is a lot smaller. I think there were 40 when I was that age. And certainly the layout's extremely different. There were lines of desks, and we had desks were in alphabetical order. We didn't speak, we took notes in our jotters. I think they'll be very quiet. I think they'll kind of be in awe because we often talk about real scientists and for primary school children who are taught by non-science specialists all the time, you know, for a real scientist to come in, um, they will think this is somebody really special. So I'm a bit concerned that they'll be very quiet. I'm hoping that they'll get into it. Good, well, um, I'm Steve Jones. I'm a geneticist and biologist from University College London, and I've been given the rather scary task of giving you people a lesson about my subject. So that's what we'll be talking about. We'll be talking about um, genes, inheritance, uh, differences between people, differences between other kinds of creature even. You must have heard of these things called G-E-E-N-E-S, genes. Can we tell me what a gene is? Um, some of them might be thinking about blue genes. Um, isn't genes like the difference between somebody, like people have different kinds of genes? Yeah, that's, that's also true. And me, you ask any, any ideas, anything they know about genes? You, you, seem you to should know. know. Some of you. What, what do you think about genes? Um, is it like the difference between like, living things? Yeah, that's another good way of putting it. And in fact, that's what we're going to be doing today, is talking about differences, all right? Now, I actually have spent many, many years looking at differences in a kind of animal that many people don't think about, and some people don't even like, and that's actually snails. And here we've got some snails we actually collected yesterday out in the countryside. And I'll put some on each table for you, see? And you just look at them and tell me you okay, that's good. You shouldn't bite them because they've got nice little personalities of their own. All right, what else can we say about them? Steve's snails are proving very popular, but will his pupils' delight translate into learning? If you look at them, you'll see they've got little pointy things on their heads, okay? This is me being a snail. <laughs> And actually, amazingly enough, if you look at them hard, they're, oh, they're picking them up. Let it crawl on your hand. Let, let's look at the snails we've got on our table, OK? And let's see if we can see any differences between them. Yeah. See if you can sort them out into groups which are different from each other, OK? Some of them are the same. How is that one different from that one? Good questioning. How are they different? What have we, we learned about looking at these snails? They're not listening to you, Steve. Different genes, different colours. They all come from a little patch of ground, not much bigger than this room. Um, but they, what do they look like? Are they all the same? 
So how are they different? Well, the shape of the shell is different and the colour and the, the stripes are different. All right. And what do you think? Some are brown and some are kind of green and yellow. Yeah, all right. So I think what we found is they're all different. OK. Now, we know that if we, if we have uh, groups or families of snails, these differences are passed on from mummy and daddy snails to baby snails. In fact, they're controlled by those magical things called genes. So we can see genes. All right, Steve, you're telling them you should be getting them to tell you that. I think his name is Albert, actually. Um, <laughs> um, this one's got a gene for stripes, OK? And we're going to see if we can find differences between ourselves, which um, might be due to genes, just like these snails. OK, now what I want, to, we will, I want to divide ourselves up in different ways. Now, how could we divide ourselves up? Which way could we divide ourselves up? Our sight. Say again? Our sight. Our sight, yeah. Well, we can wear glasses like me and you. Any other ways? What do you...? With their skin colour. Their skin colour? Skin well, we colour, straight in so with it. I knew they would, straight into skin colour. Possible. There's one very <laughs> obvious way which nobody's thought of. Boy and girl. Boy and girl. OK, so that's an obvious way. So why don't we have all the boys on these two tables and all the girls on those tables, if that works. All right? So put the, put the snails down on the tables. All right, this is going to be interesting now. We're going to have a bit of chaos going on. Snails crawling everywhere. And the children are being asked to move. See how they handle that one. And actually, that's due to genes as well, because the boys have got a special gene, um, which the girls don't have. Sorry about that, girls, or perhaps sorry about that, boys. So we can divide ourselves up uh, into boys and girls. That's obvious. Now, w what other way could we go? One way, looking at you people, I can see some differences already. Some people have got blue eyes, and some people have got brown or dark eyes. Who's got blue eyes? Yeah, you've got, you've got blue eyes. Yes, they are. <laughs> He's got green eyes. They're bluish. So, Another way, you mentioned a way, didn't you? Which, what was the way you thought we could look at it? Um, skin colour. Skin colour. Well, that's not quite so easy. Obviously, if we look around the room... Let's see how Steve tackles skin colour. So who thinks they've got light-coloured skin? And who thinks they've got darker-coloured skin? So these are things we, are, we know about, that they're easy. Now I'm going to show you one you probably don't know. I know what you've been thinking since this lesson began. You've been thinking, I want to stick my tongue out at the teacher, haven't you? No. Oh, yes. Who said yes? All right, you stick, you, you, you wanted you to stick your tongue out at the teacher. All right, stick your tongue out at the teacher. Who else wants to stick their tongue out at the teacher? Ah, now you, you, now roll it into a tube. Okay? Now you do, you do it. You, you can't roll it into a tube. So everybody do, stick their tongue out at their friend and see if they can roll it into a tube. See our friend here. Who can do it? Somebody, well, I can't. Mm. <laughs> and you can't either. No? Congratulations, you're just like me. We'll have to stick together because we're all got kind of these special non-rolling tongues, all right? <laughs> Have you got any questions about, about those, those differences so far? Why do you think people have got different skin colors, for example? Why? And now this is getting to the point. Now they're going to the get, board. now they're going to take it on board. My dad's black and my mum's white, so uh -huh. I've got both. So you've got both. What do you There's think? like different uh, differences in the, um, not the organs, but the cells in the body. So there's differences in the cells in the body. Does anybody know what those differences might be in your skin cells? We're a bit like snails, really, because some of us are dark and some of us are light. All right, he's dealing with this in quite a good way. It's quite a difficult subject here. Stripes on the snails. And that's amazing, isn't it? These, these snails have got exactly the same chemicals in their skin as we all have, but some of us have more than others, OK? So that's something we share with snails. So we've done boys and girls. We've done skin colour. We've done eye colour. We've done tongue rolling. OK, now, that's good. Me, Going back through. Rolling. Now, let me do another one. Has anybody heard of fingerprints? Yeah. OK. What, some, somebody tell me what you know about fingerprints. What, somebody on this table tell me about what you know about fingerprints. Everyone has a different fingerprint. Well, just by chance, we can look at our fingerprints now because I brought with me something to do your fingerprints. And what you need to do is take your thumb and roll it over like this. 
Then get your piece of paper, just stick it down there, and then roll it on again, and then look at it under the microscope, under the magnifying glass, and you'll see your fingerprint, okay? So, okay, don't put too much on. Don't put too much ink on, says Steve. It's like red rag to a bull to those children. They're going to put lots of ink on. Following Fiona's advice that the snails should be removed for their own safety, the children are free to explore the smudgy science of fingerprints. If you look at your fingerprint, well, there's two kinds. There's things which we can, we can call them waves. And we can call this one circles. It's a horrible noise. Oh, this is good now because they're really getting into this enjoying. So you've got, if you've got a circle, you've got a circle. Okay? So you've got a circle. Congratulations. That's an awful lot of ink. Do it, do it several times. All right. All right. All right. I'm not quite sure how to get all their attention. And they're getting a little bit chatty. I think I've put a bit too much on He needs to change. You're going to have to wash your hands. The angle a little bit. <laughs> Looks as though he's doing that. He's handing round the cups now. That's really good. That's a good idea. So he's getting ready to move on to the next activity. So here's something else I bet you didn't know. Um, but not only do we differ in the way we look, we differ in the way we taste. But you haven't got all their attention. They're more fascinated by the equipment. Some are still doing the fingerprints. Have you tasted tonic water before? He needs to have stopped them and got them looking straight at him and listening. And when Europeans first went to India and to Africa, they got malaria, and they used to take tonic water to make them better. And now we don't have the disease anymore, but we still like tonic water. So what I'm going to ask you to do, if you want to, you don't have to, is just take a little tiny drink, and then you can put your hand up when you th if you think it's nasty or nice. Cheers, big ears. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm not quite sure what the boys are up to with theirs, but they've already tasted it. It's nice, it's nice. I think Steve should have waited and all of them tried it at the same time. Oh. <coughs> Your tongue's gone green. <laughs> I should have poured this out first, shouldn't I? <laughs> who thinks that the tonic water tastes nasty and bitter? And who thinks it's actually quite nice? All right, if, can, can, I have, can I have your attention just for a minute? So when we look at nice and nasty, it's a bit hard to know what we mean by nice and nasty, but it means something, doesn't it? I can see some people making horrible faces. Ooh, it's horrible. And that actually is due to another gene. It's different between two people. Some people think that this is nice. They, can t they taste the sugar. Good. Some people that's taste good. The now they're listening. And that's another gene difference. It's both of them, OK? And you're getting completely covered in black ink as well, so I'll get into trouble. So what we've done is to look at a lot of different things. What have we looked at? Boys and girls, right? What else did we look at? Genes. Yeah, we looked at genes. Genes for boy and girl. Genes for the color of your eyes. Genes for fingerprints. Genes for surprising things like tasting nasty quinine or not. And what we're going to do is fill up a little questionnaire. We're going to ask you to make your own little identity chart saying who you are based on exactly that. You can keep this. I'm not going to take it away. Um, They'll like that, the idea of having something to keep. It. it says, I am a boy or I am a girl. I'm a boy, by the way, myself. Then you can put a circle around that. How could, do you like this stuff? Yeah, I do. My mum loves it. Really mucky hands now, and they're more oh, interested no, in their it. mucky hands than okay, so listening. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it next. Can I have a mark? You haven't got a sheet? Let me get you one. Your hair is dark. Is my real name Indiana Jones? No, it's not my real name. Actually, my real name is John Jones. My name is John Stephen Jones. But when I was your age, people used to laugh at me for being called John Jones, so I started calling myself Stephen. And I'm not going to ask everybody to do this, because it'll take some time. But let's call them column A for the left-hand column, and column B for the right-hand column. And our friend Gustav here, OK? He is a boy, so he scores A on there. 
and his hair is dark, so he scores B on there. His eyes are dark, so he scores B. He can roll his tongue, so he scores A. His right thumb is on top, so he scores B. His fingerprint has got those waves in, so he scores A. Um, and it, the um, taste does not taste nasty, so he scores B. So his identity is A, B, B, A, B, A, B. See, see how I did that? This is quite a, difficult B, for... For these children, it's being asked to put a code now when they're going up to the boards. I'm not sure if they've really understood what they have to do. And you'd read out your read out your B A B B A B B B A B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B well, that's quite a good strategy. Now he's gone back to the children that are still seated. This lesson's so cool. Put yours up. So let's go back to our desks now. Yeah. 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 Ye
So that took away that side of the, you know, we must write this down. Yeah. So it was all wholly practical. Okay, and the so idea of them actually getting up and moving around the room as well is something that us as class teachers, we would try and avoid that as much yeah, as possible. Um, so that, of course, that engaged them as well. They liked that. Yeah, well, but then I, yeah. at the same time, I, th I think it was then quite difficult for you to get them settled. I mean, it was interesting you said that they didn't have to write anything down and they enjoyed it. But of course, that's a definition of a bad science lesson. Because if you're doing science and you don't write it down, you haven't done it. Not necessarily at all, no. Well, I'm not so sure. I mean, there are notorious... I'm bad at writing things down. And you're always doing experiments where you don't write down every detail of what you did. And then when you try and do it again, it won't work. And that's because you didn't write it down. So I think that, you know, this, this formal stuff has a, has, a, has a part to play. They certainly loved your sense of humour. But um, I think that you needed just sometimes to, to give them a little longer to answer, to answer the questions. Because I noticed that sometimes you, you asked a very good question and didn't give them quite long enough for their responses. But of course, that's, a, that's knowing the children. And you would, um, once you're familiar with the children, so if you were teaching here long term, I'm sure it would have been easier. I don't think I could cope with teaching long term. I'd just die of exhaustion. I mean, I give a lecture for an hour, then I have to sit for the rest of the day quivering, drinking tea. But you'd have hundreds of exam scripts to mark. That's also true. Well, I enjoyed it. The children enjoyed it as well, hugely. All right, well, I hope the snails did. <laughs> <laughs>I think the attraction of talking about science to younger children, for them, everything's new. In many ways, they're still real scientists. But I think it's worth reminding ourselves that science is fundamentally an infantile pastime.